what um, PHE are interested in are three elements of the, uh, the whole campus. So this middle, this north side, yeah. um, and then there are two for the car park and those yeah. areas. But this is the really interesting area for us, and as you picked up, it's about use of the existing infrastructure. Right. So SE1 has got uh, flexible modern laboratories, and the majority of um, the facilities will actually go in there. In here, in, in, into, in, the into the big building. Right. We have another building at the back there, which is called H35, and that's the ultimate flexibility. That's where we've got opportunities around other partnerships. So, for instance, with Cambridge University, research as well as commercial, academic, um, and because it's so flexible, it just lends itself to it. So, where's the, the most difficult work that we've done? Oh, yeah. I'll come on to that. I can answer. So overall, there's actually very little demolition because we can use so much of the existing infrastructure. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to demolish a little bit in here, which is all right. sort of low maintenance. Get the DNA okay. out of the organ. So take a sample, you put it into this machine like this. It's called an auto extractor, and that will that run for 45 minutes. You have a pot of DNA. Okay. And then you can place that um, in little tubes, you know, up here, to put them inside one of these machines. And this is the current generation. That amplifies the amount of DNA and generates a signal. And when it generates a signal, a colour change will take place as the fluorescent change for that matter. And you can change, you can map the appearance of the signal that says, this is the germ I'm looking for. Right? Limitations, only one germ does it look for normally, um, and obviously it takes some time. And a lot of steps. The all-in-one test is what we use in the middle of the night when you ask for an Ebola test. Right. So here you just take the blood, you don't have to do anything else to it except plug these components together, put the sample in, uh, put it into a special holder which sucks the material in, and then you take the whole device. So this is how you would test for Ebola today? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So the one gets off the plane, off the plane, off the plane. Right. Blood people, are, yep. they, they, they don't feel well. Yep. They have the blood test. And the blood test, and this is what was done in Royal London and Halab in Newcastle. So how long does that take then? This takes um, about 15 minutes and you have to put all of it together sure. in one a cabinet like that for safety. Right. So you get and a then, result. Really. And you get a result in this in about one hour for putting the lid and pressing the start button. Okay. But it's still only one thing. When do we get to the... Um, That's what I was mm -hmm. The time is mostly the travel time. Two things you can do better. Okay. Yeah. This was made by DSTL. Yeah. It's a rapid test. For that you just put the blood on the spot there. You add a spot of the agent and 15 minutes later a little bar will appear. Robert Halfon, a, a huge day for Harlow, but I imagine not an overnight success. No, I think this is one of the greatest days in Harlow in a generation. We are going to be a centre of scientific excellence. Um, the government have announced the chance has come here today, £350 million in investment, uh, to up to 10,000 jobs, if not more being created. Um, it's been a five-year battle. Um, we've had a big slog in Parliament because there was a, a big movement to maintain the laboratory in Salisbury and we've had to fight hard. Uh, I can't think of not only just how many comments debates, questions, comments, motions in Parliament, meetings with ministers. In fact we were here only four years ago with um, the then Health Secretary Andrew Lansley lobbying for it. I've had enormous meetings with the Chancellor, it's hard even for me to believe that it's all over and that we have uh, got this uh, fantastic uh, multi-million pound investment for Harlow residents. Because it feels like the docks are joining together, whether you talk about the Enterprise Zone, UTC here, Junction 7A, is that how well, you see it? Since I've been in Har um, MP for Harlow, since I was elected kindly by the residents in 2010, I've made it my business to fight hard for Harlow. Um, and we've got the 50 million plus enterprise zone, the 10 million that's gone into the University of Texas School, millions of pounds being invested to build up our roads to ease the traffic. I know that causes a lot of angst uh, with residents. And then this, which is the biggest thing of all, it is going to be transformational. Uh, Harlow is going to be not just the centre of England uh, uh, for scientific excellence, but genuinely, without exaggeration, the centre of the world because Public Health England is one is the leading body in the world fighting against uh, diseases like Ebola. In fact, we saw an Ebola demonstration in the laboratory today, how they're dealing with it. 
it is um, uh, something that British people should be very, very proud of. And it's a huge vote of confidence um, from the Chancellor uh, to in Harlow um, that this has happened. But may I just mention something else? That I'd like to give special thanks to sometimes people who are not in the public eye, to Malcolm Morley, who is the Chief Executive of Harlow Council and uh, is a remarkable individual, one of the finest public servants I've ever come across because of the work he has done uh, with Public Health England, with the government, with myself regularly talking to me to bring uh, this uh, uh, incredible laboratory to our town has been enormous and often public servants aren't in the public eye and so I think every resident should be thankful that Harlow is, is run by, uh, that, you know, the Harlow Council is run by Malcolm William and that we are in good hands.